in the back of the room She nudged him and asked him Won't it look or patience That you kept me in your heart You became my favorite Cause you're not like the other boys If I want enough Then you'd be out of luck But you're not like other boys Oh What's up? 
I love how he smiles at the start of every stream while dancing to the songs in the background. I, I, you know what? I gotta be hype. I gotta be hype. <clears throat> Y'all ready for these chess games though? <clears throat> we are going to, we are going to be playing these chess games. And we gotta, we gotta make the music a little bit more the hood GM. I know the hood GM. You already know. Newly appointed, of course. Newly appointed. I'm, I'm glad you're liking the streams, man. And I am pretty late, but at least I'm here. Like, I could just not be here. I could just not be here. Let's get started. Have any questions so far? Absolutely. You absolutely ready for these lessons? I can play anybody, like I said before. Challenge me in a rapid game. What's up, David? How you doing, bro? Let's go. 2 a.m. I should be asleep. It doesn't even matter. We are still gonna get these rapid games in. Um, I'm gonna be explaining each move that I do. So if you're gonna put in a 10 minute game, make sure that you um, put, it, put in like a five second increment. Or not, but it's gonna be like less enjoyable for everybody else. Um, and Blitz too, that's fine. Like five minute, five, three is fine because I can kind of still explain my moves. Replicate, what's up, how you doing? Coakling, Grid, what's good? Are y'all ready to get started? Let's get the chessboard up. Let's get the chessboard up. Do, do we got any challenges? Unmute <clears throat> so we can hear the board. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Late night. Late night stream and still family friendly. Isn't that kind of crazy? Just a little bit. What do we got today? Let's just stick with like 10, 5. 15, 10 might be a little bit too much. 15, 10 might be a little bit too much. And if you're going to do a five minute, it has to be a, a increment because I don't want to just beat you on time. I don't want to just beat you with like mouse skills. All right, guys. Any tournaments tonight? I guess we could do like a rapid tournament. I'll think about it. I'll think about the rapid tournament and then I can still explain my moves. Red box. <laughs> Red box. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Um, do y'all see the game right now on the screen? You challenged me? Yeah, I've seen the challenges. I just need them to be changed just a little bit. Okay, so we do got the first challenge. And if there is a computer being used, I mean, it's just less enjoyable for everybody else. <clears throat> and then plus, just to let everybody know, for the one time, which I will start off this game with D4. Let me turn off the music right quick. Let everybody know for the one time. Since I am a chess.com streamer, I do have the power to let them know that you are cheating and get your whole account closed. And you will never, ever be able to play on chess.com again. So please don't cheat on my stream or act, you know, or don't act like a douche. How about that? Nobody uses that word. Don't don't act like a douche, bastard, whatever. I don't care. Let's get to it. Oh, snap. Did that game abort? The internet is down. The internet is not down. <clears throat> Let's get to it. Some of the black pieces now. And with the black pieces, I always do the Sicilian. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. What's your rating, bro? My rating is like 2200 in rapid. I'm tired of these blade and cheats. I know exactly. I am too. I am too. Knight to F6. So, <clears throat> just to turn the music a little bit down so that... Actually, I think y'all can still hear me. Is the music at a good pace? At a, at a good volume? I, I can turn it down just a little bit more for y'all. Actually, let me just turn it down a little bit. I can't even hear my own thoughts. I, I, I like jazz so much, but, you know, not that much. I'm, I'm trying to talk. 
All right, <clears throat> I'm playing. I'm playing viewers, guys. So this is a 900, but most of you can't beat a 900. So, you know, you got to start somewhere. <laughs> you got to start somewhere. So usually, <clears throat> if my opponent plays e4, I do the Sicilian, which is c5. After they do the move c3, which is called the Alipin opening. I usually do the move knight to f6 to attack this pawn, forcing them to make a very crucial decision in the position to either push it or protect it. And these are the type of openings that I like primarily because I could do the main line and do the move d5, but I, I actually like knight to f6 a lot, a lot better. And then plus two, I guess 900, 600 rated players, they usually forget to protect this pawn, which that that's just a free pawn. That's not a trap. That's that pawn is free. <clears throat> and we take those. Hey, what's up, chess teacher? Man, you already know what it is. Music is good. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Stone face was good. What's good, JP? <laughs> What's good? Oh snap, I forgot to do the TTS for y'all. Just in case y'all want to do that. And on TikTok, and on TikTok, just to let you know, the people that can do TTS is only the people that are subscribed or are the top uh, three gifters. So hopefully you're not confused about that. Let's not lose on time <clears throat> because that's one thing that we're gonna have to make sure that we don't do. So let's do C takes on D5. And whatever they capture with, we might just do the move d5 here. Actually, we could do e6 too to castle the king as soon as possible. I kind of like I kind of like e6 a lot more because I could just do bishop e7, knight to f6, etc. Okay. So they're going a little bit faster and we have to go a little bit faster. This is a 5-5, five five, so I do have time, but an increment can be kind of deceiving because when you get low on time, I mean, you don't want to live off the increment. And like I said before, we are pawn up. So now our opponent is going to have to prove to us what are they doing upon down? And so this is a whole different type of position. And then plus two, you're the black pieces. You go second and I'm already comfortable because I already know what I'm doing. That's why it's really important to know your openings. Started last month. Uh, 450? Hey, man, 450 is pretty good starting last month. No way I'm going to win. Okay. Okay. I see you. Instead of uh, took the E4 pawn. Yeah, free pawns. We take those. We take those. Play slower. If you lose, then it's a skill issue. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So, so one thing in the Sicilian that we, we usually do here, a common thing, is do these moves a6 b5 and they usually put the bishop to b7 because if i do d5 put the bishop to d7 then that bishop has less scope and it is not very active along i mean this diagonal i wanted to be on this long diagonal and i don't want that knight ever going to the b5 square so usually this pawn goes to a6 and then i push up b5 bishop b7 that's why most players do that and they just made it a little bit better for us to do it because we get like this free tempo on the bishop here. The bishop has to move or it will be taken and our opponent doesn't want to be down more pawns. And then we get this free bishop to b7 move here. He said that he is not going on um, 15. To, yeah, I'm not doing 15, 10. That's too long. It has to be at least like 10, 5, 10, 5 is good. Even 10, 10 is too long. I just don't like an increment being 10 seconds. This isn't like a tournament battle here. <clears throat> this isn't a tournament battle all right we're just gonna do knight to c6 and i'm gonna play a little bit faster while trying to explain my moves here you can send like 10 5 or in 5 5 dark listen to dark frost froze listen to him he's he's saying the right things can you teach us the scandinavian defense i do not know how to play the scandinavian defense i know like the basics but i don't know like the ultimate theory so it wouldn't really benefit y'all if I did try to teach you the Scandinavian defense, they are putting a lot of pressure on this pawn and we either have to take because all the defensive moves don't really defend the pawn. I could take, but then their rook gets pretty active. And so my first thought was actually just pushing up the pawn here. And that's pretty much what I'm going to do. If pawn captures on B, 
b4 bishop captures on b4 knight captures on b4 one of these captures i'm, I'm going to be doing here um knight captures on b4 looks a little bit more attractive so i just did that move just based off of intuition i didn't really like calculate which side would have been better here because i'm down on time and when you're down on time usually you have to play the game off of intuition and so i've seen this little like annoying move here knight b to d5 and so this is attacking the bishop on e3 and it's really good to keep track of all your opponent's undefended pieces here and now i get their bishop and i have the two bishop advantage which two bishops can have can give you more scope in the position so not only am i up what is this i'm up one pawn but i have the two bishop advantage so when there's no tactics going on in the position you look for small advantages um you accumulate those and the more you accumulate then the tactics will just start coming out of nowhere and that's pretty much how chess works most people like can find tactics like they do chess puzzles all the time on chess.com or something but most people don't know how to get into those like tactical positions and that's how you get into those tactical positions is by accumulating on those small advantages most people in the chess world don't even teach like permanent advantages and temporary advantages anymore in which if you want to know that i do offer coaching lessons now <clears throat> I, man, I don't want to do d5 yet because that's that's going to close in my bishop. But I do want to take over the center. We're going to do rook c8. Just my, my instinct is telling me rook c8 is, is a pretty solid move. Just, just taking over a file. <clears throat> Stone face. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. What's up, KC Ninja? How you doing? Have you played the Alien Gambit? Oh, yeah, yeah, I do need to play the Alien Gambit. I don't know who would want to play the Carol Khan against me, but yeah, I don't mind playing the Alien Gambit for one go. I think I've seen this video on it. Your time and a half of the profile picture is inviolable. What are you talking about? I don't know what that means. So they are like trying to form some threats here, but I'm going to move a little bit faster and just hurry up and do the move bishop c5 pretty much defending and attacking at the same time since that bishop on c5 is technically pinning that knight on d4 to the king on the g1 square and so i'm probably am going to have to do the move that i've been like we're going to do this whole time a d5 but at least it's like kicking a knight somewhere else instead of like being all up in my grill because when you're down on time, you don't want none of your pieces all up in your grill. You want your opponent's pieces to be doing the least amount of threats as possible. And it kind of makes you feel more safe. It kind of makes you feel more comfortable trying to like finagle, finagle. I don't use that in real like conversation. <laughs> I don't use that word in real conversation, but this does help you like finagle. Um, that tip does help you finagle you out of the positions. Dang, say that three times fast. Can I play you next? Yeah, sure, maybe. You just got to challenge me after the games is done. So they decided to go to knight b6 anyway, but now this just gives us another pawn, and we take those. We take those, and our opponent, and I took it super fast because I kind of already analyzed that the opponent really doesn't have any threats here. And you can kind of see that by what they're attacking presently right now. So this knight is attacking the e6 square. This bishop is attacking a6. The rook was attacking a6. And we're defending all those points with the queen. And that pawn is defending that e6 pawn. There's no tactics anywhere for the opponent. And so, yeah, it just makes our job a lot more easier. Now, <clears throat> next step. Like I said, we're just going to improve our position. That's the main goal here. Improve our position, but not overdo it. We don't want to overdo it. So we're going to double up on the C file. That's going to be the next goal. And after we double up on the C file, our next goal is probably going to be to get the Rook on the second rank. The only problem is that Knight is on the second rank. G4 is pretty desperate and it kind of creates weaknesses. But if you're in a losing position, that is actually a really good move to do because you want to call some threats. You don't want to just have your opponent like strangle. You don't just want to have your opponent um, 
just like take over the position and be able to like bully you around and stuff like that. You don't want to be bullied around. You want to do the bullying over the chessboard. This is Jason from uh, Dot Spot. Uh, nice to see a live vase of yours. Hey, Dot, um, Dot Spot Chess Club in Kansas City, man. That's a really cool chess club. Y'all should go there um, if you do live in Kansas City. Drive there. I think it's every Thursday around like four to seven. Really cool chess club. Very nice people. I do have to think about these sacrifices that could potentially happen. Oh, yeah. I cannot take this night because <laughs> that's just a really that's not an important move to be doing right now. Taking that night. But we are going to put this night to E5 and I'm going to have to play a little bit faster. Rare footage of H1 promoting bullying. I know, right? Dang it. Ah, I didn't know I was ever going to be doing that. But technically, in chess, you kind of are bullying your opponent if you are, like, ahead of material. Technically. We're going to do C knight to C6 because all I want to do is just trade pieces, get this knight out of this D4 square so that I can finally push this D-pawn, and then I can finally get this bishop open. That's, that's the main goal here. <clears throat> so they are, like... They are forming some strategies here, which I do like them. We're going to just take that G6 pawn. We're going to allow this to happen. Well, I think they messed up there. I think they kind of messed up there. And I kind of like skimmed through all the moves that they could have done in like a in like a hurry. I was looking at moves like Rook G1 that they could have done. But all of them, I mean, we're in time to do our moves. So knight to f5 is coming really fast, and now d4. And after I get these moves off, and then rook c2, it's over. Thank you for the subscription, KC Ninja. I appreciate it. And I appreciate the support, too. Thank you for letting me record at the chess club. Um, those in real life streams are pretty awesome. So, <clears throat> and I do in real life streams on Twitch only. I do in real life streams on Twitch only, so go follow my Twitch channel. I haven't like figured out a way to, I mean, bringing all the equipment to like a chess club is kind of, that's a lot of work, guys. So it's only going to be on Twitch until further notice. They are attacking this pawn, and we are going to have to keep that in mind. But we have so many threats happening right now where that attack on the pawn really doesn't even matter. And I'm thinking that this next move is checkmate. Music is good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Everybody's good. So <clears throat> let's analyze this right quick. Just to make sure everybody got all the, the lessons from it. Let's analyze this game. I'm going to be accepting another challenge shortly. Don't worry. Don't worry, guys. And I would rather you not stream snipe, but I can't confirm that. So it is what it is, I guess. But don't be mad when I reverse stream snipe you. Don't be mad when I'm saying, oh, that's a good move when it's really not. That's my best game against you yet. Yeah, no, that was a very slow, patient game. So I appreciate it. The only problem is, though, is that in the opening, you gave me a free pawn. And we take those, right? Sometimes you're going to have to like double check to see if there's like a trap around. But one good indicator that is actually a good pawn to take is if your opponent doesn't have any pieces developed. So all these pieces are still on the first rank. And since, I mean, since all the pieces are still on the first rank, there's really no good moves instead of like queen to f3, queen to b3, queen to, queen to a4. There was no... There's no checks on my king that could happen, even in this position. And even so, after knight takes on e4, even if they took this pawn, I could take that pawn too. Knight takes on c5. And yeah, this is just a difficult to this is just a difficult position to try to defend for the whole entire game. Uh, thank you for the follow on uh, Fordums. I appreciate it. You won't be reverse stream stream sniping me. <laughs> you never know. You never know. So don't just be listening to me. After there, I hurry up and did e6, castle the king as soon as possible. Any other move would have been fine too, but I felt like this is the safest route. 
And since I'm teaching a lesson, I mean, yeah, Castle and King as fast as possible if you're up in material, it's the best route. And if you see the evaluation bar here on the left hand side, it went up further the closer I got to castling. And so the computer, like they want you to castle as soon as possible and get yourself to safety when you're up in material. And so the rest of the game, we just we just did small improving moves and the opponent made mistakes for us. We developed all our pieces. We decided not to take that A pawn because that would have gave our opponent some counterplay. And we pushed up B4. After B4, taking that pawn, um, we took their bishop. We got the two bishop advantage. And then we used our bishops at the end to finally deliver checkmate, blundered another pawn, etc. So all the people that is under 1,000 ELO, this is how you have to play chess in order to beat somebody that is 600 ELO. This is what you're going to have to pass. And I know it can be tough because the moves are so random, but you're going to have to like level up your play. Okay. Next match. Actually, let's just go to the end of that so that y'all can see. And none of these attacks doesn't matter if your attack is faster. That's another principle too. Yep. And then this checkmate. Who is next? We got some 2000 rated players here, but <clears throat> I do want to increment on those on those games, guys. I do want to increment on those games and Dark Frost Frozen. We're actually going to play you because you actually man, you've been supporting me on the Twitch and the YouTube live stream. So, yeah, let's go there. Replicate uh, reality. I can't play and watch at the same time because I'm on, on my iPad. Yeah, it's tough. That's why you just got to play next time. You just got to focus. I thought the F3 pawn was on F4. Ah, uh, yeah, that sucks. What's all the other comments? Okay. <clears throat> all right, back to lesson mode. Y'all ready? Back to lesson mode? Okay. Usually I do bishop g5 if the knight ever, um, if the knight developed on f6 first, but since they did the move f um, e6, going into some hyper modern type of opening, we're gonna do knight to f3 just to figure out what our opponent wants to do. Knight to f3 can be committal, but at the same time, it goes along with my opening repertoire. It goes along with my opening repertoire. I guess I could have started off with E3-2 going into like the Kali system, but I'm still trying to figure out if I'm a Kali system type of player. I'm going to have to like look up the theory. I know you love the Trumpowski. Uh, do that. Well, I couldn't do it right now because after Bishop G5, Queen can just take. But now since I did Knight to F3 and, they're do and they did D5, I can go into my other favorite line, which is the Tory attack. After bishop to g5, attacking the queen, they're going to have to do something about it. Most people do knight to f6 to pin, um, pretty much pin their knight to the queen. And then I've seen some games where most people did like bishop e7 because they hate this bishop. Um, but I'm thinking that's like higher rated players that be doing that. You should try it out. So I'm going to go into my Tory attack. And a Tory attack is basically like a London system, but with the bishop on g5. So same concept is going to happen here. Bishop d3. Bishop d3. They're, they're attacking my bishop. So we're going to put the bishop back. We're going to go to c3. Knight d2, etc. We're going to do c3 right now because we don't want our opponent to do the move knight to b4 to attack our bishop on d3. So... <clears throat> We have the choice. We can be super flexible here. Knight d2 or castle. Knight d2 or castle. I'm actually going to go knight d2 first. I'm actually going to go knight d2 first, just in case if they ever want to go knight to e4, because I have played some players that did a quick knight to e4, which those positions can be really annoying for the white pieces because you're like trading off everything into like a draw end game. Never seen someone that plays the Tory attack. Yeah, nah. The Tory attack is really easy to play, and that's why I play it. That's why I play it. So, queen to d6 is actually a pretty funny-looking move. And what do I mean by that? Well, queen d6... Queen d6, and y'all can ask questions in the chat. I don't care. Queen d6 does allow me to do, like, bishop g3, attacking the queen right now. Which, actually, I might do that still, but 
it does allow me to do e4 too which after e4 d takes on e4 knight takes on e4 knight takes on e4 bishop takes on e7 remember that bishop is being attacked probably knight takes on e7 bishop takes and then we, we're I'm, i mean we would like trade off all the pieces I don't want to trade off all the pieces, so I am going to do the move bishop to g3, attacking the queen. After the queen moves back, their bishop is going to the b7 square, so queen d7 is actually a very appropriate move. The only problem is, though, is that their piece is going to look really passive if they take this knight now. And I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you how. Why not eat? the knight and trade for the bishop well that's my favorite bishop and usually i don't want to give my opponent the two bishop advantage just in case we get to like an end game if everything opens up the two bishops rules over everything not the not the knight and bishop coordination not the two knights but the two bishops rules over everything if the position opens up and my main idea in the tory attack is doing e4 and opening things up in the center anyway so that would be counterproductive for me to even do that now <clears throat> in the tory attack very simple plans i'm going to be doing here first of all after doing the move knight to e5 my opponent has the option to either take or not take usually if they do not take then I'm able to play the move F4. F4 actually instantly. And now if they take, it's going to be a worse position. And then they're going to have to like finagle their... We're going to like make that the word of the day. We're going to... They're going to have to like finagle their way uh, out of this horrible position. I really don't like the black side here. Um, there is a better way to play than doing the move D5, which is a big concession um, going against the Tory attack. But I digress. Let's keep on going. Now, I could play bishop b5, but then they have the move. Um, they do have the move bishop to d7. So that's not really a threat. Just to let everybody know, that is not really a threat. I can put the bishop back to h4 to try to threaten to um, break the pawn structure on the king side. That is one option, too. I do want to have both of these pieces still on like the e4 square because I don't want their knight ever hopping into this e4 square. And then plus two, a secret, like secret idea that they shouldn't know about, that they're probably going to know about now. Silly dude. Yeah, I'm that guy that be throwing the pieces with the chessboard. I am that guy. Um, my younger brother's 2100 after a year and a half. That isn't. Yeah, that's super impressive. If, if that's true, that's really impressive. Best in the end games. Chili Pixel, thank you. Thank you for the follow. And so I do have a secret idea that I could do in this position, which is bishop to b1, queen c2, and try to go for this quick checkmate on the h7 square. We're gonna we're gonna like try to do all these ideas at once. And usually I like doing the move bishop to h4 first. Usually my bishop is already on h4, but since they like I think that's a bad move that they did, queen to d6. Since they did the move queen to d6, um, it kind of like sped up the process. Before I ever do bishop to b1, though, just to make sure everybody knows, I'm going to have to figure out what I'm doing with this rook on a1. If it's going to be better on um, the a1 square, or if I'm going to have to do the move rook c1 first before I do bishop to b1. And that is pretty much the idea. If they do stop this checkmated idea along this diagonal, then I can like pawn storm because guess what? The center is closed and the center is closed. And usually if the center is closed, we can attack on the flank in chess. They did capture. We're going to always capture back with the F pawn. And now their knight has a decision to make. Where is it going? It went there. And... Yeah, I just don't like this position for the black pieces. It might still be okay, but I don't see... Like, after the move queen to g4 or queen to h5, it just looks really scary for them. So queen h5, I wouldn't do because mostly I already know that my opponent wants to do the move f5 here. And so I am thinking about either doing e4 
after e4, d takes on e4, knight takes on e4, or queen g4. After queen g4, I am going to have to think about this move f5. That will happen. It's like pretty much the only move that they have to do <clears throat> in this position. And then I'm forced to take. They take back with the knight, and then they're going to be attacking my queen. I really don't want that to happen for real, for real. So maybe e4 might be the might be the correct decision right now, but it does allow their bishop to like have some counterplay. It does allow their bishop to have some counterplay. But generally speaking, black can defend if they know all the moves to defend with. And I think I see another tactic actually. I might have I might not have to do any of those. We're gonna do e4 first. Because I'm not forced to attack the king on the king side. I'm not forced. And they can't do f5 right now because that's just a horrible move. So they either have to take or like defend. <laughs> Keep on defending. If they keep on defending, is it usually turns out to be a bad, a bad game for them. I have two options here: taking with the knight or taking with the bishop. Taking with the bishop allows me to attack this knight and pin that um, knight to the rook. But after rook, but after bishop b7, then it's actually pretty protected. I was thinking about moves like queen f3 2, but the knight can actually go back to b8, which I'm thinking that's winning still. Weirdly enough. I'm thinking that's winning still, weirdly enough. I actually like that position. Yeah, I actually like that position. We're going to do bishop takes on, yeah, on e4. Because I like my opponent's pieces being on the queen side. They could immediately do knight to b8 too. But... Not having to worry about that knight ever moving will be comforting. Be super comforting. And if that knight moves to b8, then f5 is actually less effective. And then I could just get like a an all-around attack on the opponent. In order for me to get a successful attack on my opponent, I'm gonna have to at least move four to five pieces over to the king's side to attack their king. So that's going to be another one of my like sub goals for me to reach. Dang, I cannot see the comments on TikTok on my phone. My phone is being weird. But anyway, hey, Joshua, thank you for following the host. Uh, I appreciate you. you. Got him on the heels. I mean, I'm trying. That's what you're supposed to do in chess. Bro, be announcing and teaching with his own games. Never change, bro. <laughs> I'll try not to. Thank you. Thank you guys for following. I, I was trying to look at the chat from my phone, but none of none of the, the chat moves were populated. And I usually don't want y'all to give me moves during the game. So like I said before, I'm going to do this move queen of f3. And then, like, figure out what my opponent's going to do to defend. Because <clears throat> there's only a certain amount of moves that, that they can do. First of all, if they do knight to a5, then we can just capture their pieces. And then we're in the winning position. They kind of have to do that move. I guess they can go for the sacrifice. That's probably more active, but at the same time, I don't think I'm I don't think I'm worried about that. Wait a minute, no. Capture, capture, move back, capture? No, wait a minute. Wait, I'm tripping. Capture, 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 move back. Capture, capture. Move. They do have a lot of pawns, but I don't think that's winning for him. I want to play with you. First of all, Anonymous, pause. Secondly, I don't mind. Do y'all have any more questions? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. This is like the only way for them to actually get a to actually get a good position. 
because their last move that they could do is knight b8 but that that move is pretty ugly so that's why i like this opening because it's, it's actually super flexible it's actually super flexible so i don't have to attack my opponent's king i can go for like a positional type of um type of game against my opponent We're gonna take back with the knight because if I take back with the queen, the knight can like move over, attack my bishop, and then my knight is gonna be undefended with uh, undefended on d2. So I really don't wanna, I really don't wanna like chance. Actually, wait a minute. I guess they could do some like powerhouse moves, right? Maybe queen here is the best move because if knight goes to if knight goes to g6, I could do bishop. Bishop g3, and if queen takes, they don't have this move f5, but if I take with the knight, they kind of have this move f5, and then I have to like decide where the knight is going, and if my knight is going back to d2, then it really was no purpose of my knight capturing on the e4 square. So I'm glad I actually got to talk this out, because I think queen takes on e4 is the right move here. Queen takes on e4, punishing the knight. The knight has to move. Bishop g3, attacking the c7 pawn, just to keep all of our threats in the in the position. And then this is the real game. Because right now we're only we're only up a pawn, right? We're only up plus one. <clears throat> we're still gonna have to figure out exactly how to consolidate this position. And that's the second, like, and that's the the second goal that we need to reach. So I have a few other options here. I got two minutes, so uh, I'm going to be playing a little bit faster. Just a little bit faster. I actually... I have to make sure everything is correct here. I have to make sure I wanted to do this move queen to c4, but I have to like calculate some lines if my opponent did f4. I can do this, but my queen will be a little bit exposed, but I'm a pawn grabber. Usually if I see a pawn, I, I like calculate a little bit, but then I just stop. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It's a really bad habit. I need to get better at actually calculating pawn grabs. Um, sometimes I'm pretty blinded when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the pawn grab. Let's not do queen to d6, but we have to do the move um, queen to c5 here, and we're gonna go actually tremendously a lot faster. Tremendously a lot faster. We're gonna go queen b4. The only thing that I'm worried about in this position is my knight. My knight is undefended and I don't like it. So if I can get an extra move to get my king out of this diagonal. I know what I said about my knight, but I need to like keep the tension on my opponent's pieces. I can't be passive either. And if I have to give away a piece because they have a lot of initiative, then, I mean, that's fine, too. Honestly, that's fine, too. We are going to be attacking that E-pawn. Let's figure out how this is going to end. Seems like the ops goal is to beat you on, on time. Yeah, it seems like it because they are going a little bit faster. But that's not really a threat, actually. So I, I don't really have to respond to that. Hmm. I could do knight here. Uh, these moves are pretty hard to make on the spot. These moves are pretty hard to make. We're gonna go go a little bit faster because I want to like actually trick them now. It is ten five, so I could be able to like play a little bit faster oh snap they're going in are you serious right now we're gonna have to like give some material back yeah we're gonna have to get some material back
Yeah, we're gonna have to get some material back because they got a lot of initiative all of a sudden. I don't know where the initiative came from, but that was that was crazy. So good job on their part. I can do here. Yeah, good job on their part for getting that much initiative. I kind of want to keep that right there. I know I, I seen another pawn and I had to take it. Sue me. OK, <laughs> sue me. OK, all right. Yeah, let's bring that knight back. The knights can be a little bit tricky. I think the they got two bonds, but I think the initiative like left a little bit. Dang, gosh, Lee, they, they got so much initiative. I was not expecting that turnaround. This is a weird position. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to have to think about this. And I'm at 22 seconds because I was talking a lot. Yeah, Black isn't playing around. There's like their moves just tri like tremendously got better. <laughs> Black is not playing around. Wait a minute, that's really annoying. Oh no, the backward knight move. No, I was expecting them to do like the other perfect move, a ruck to C7. Bro, good job on them. That was crazy. I must have played some inaccuracies. That must have been a miss, that, was that a misclick? Oh, you meant to go to B3. Oh, dang. Work B3. Actually, that would have been pretty good. I would have did still Bishop D4, but yeah. Nah, I, I definitely misplayed that. That's going to be an interesting, um, interesting game to analyze right quick. You talked. Pogs, you're in the wrong stream. Let me remind you what stream that you're in. Instant ban. Where, where is this dude? Where is this dude at? Pogs, I talk too much, and it's not funny. If you're going to make an insult about my stream, at least make it funny, bro. Like, you need to chill. So, like, you, you know, I'm going to give you, like, five minutes to think about your decisions. Because clearly you're a grown man on TikTok that's commenting rude stuff for no reason. Like, talk to your wife, bro. Like, you have one of those. She's sitting right beside you. Some people really need to get a life. Okay, possible clapped. He's gone. Okay, thank you, Stone. I forgot you was a moderator. Instant ban. Bro, how are you so chill with like five seconds left? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm used to playing bullet. I, I actually played a lot of bullet before this. Yo, bro, what's up? Love the stream. Joe, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, let's actually go over this game, though. Man is teaching the game of chess and saying you talk to, but I know, right? It's like, why, why are you here? Why are you here? Okay, night. Oh, replicate reality. See you later, man. What is your name? Um, Actually, oh, it's H1. I can't see your timer. You can't see my timer. Oh, Snappy can't see my timer. That's my bad. Yeah, my timer was pretty low. You should be able to see my timer now. My time was pretty low, but I had the five second increment. Let's analyze this game and then I can challenge somebody else, okay? Well, I, I can't give you a rematch though, Dark Frost. Man, I'm sorry, man. I know you misclicked, but yeah, I can't give you a rematch. That, that game was too long. Maybe if it was a bullet, but nah, not dying to wrap it. But let's figure out exactly what happened here, because I actually did some wrong moves and I don't know where I went wrong. Actually, that's a, that's what happened when you get down in time. That's exactly what happens. <laughs> Wait a minute. I just I just breezed through this opening. I just breezed through this opening. But you won. Yeah, I won. But that's actually that's actually concerning that I didn't win that a lot easier. So I got into this opening. I didn't like the move B6. 
especially here after doing the move knight to c6 because usually before developing the knight to c6 you want to like push up the pawn to c5 because you really i really don't know what black's goal is here when they develop the the knight to c6 maybe their main goal is to push up the e pawn now but usually against a tori attack it's really hard to push up the e pawn so c5 is very crucial having a knight to b8 doing a move bishop a6 is very crucial things of that nature and so after castle and king side castle king side queen d6 not the best move a little inaccuracy but the computer is like you know like it's still fine make sure i took advantage of that by doing the move a bishop to g3 oh london is the absolute favorite well this is a tory attack don't disrespect my opening and calling it the london okay i know you're new here and i appreciate your comment too for being like a first time chatter but yeah we don't like the london over here i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> we do we just don't it is what it is <laughs> we we're just hating the london for the meme but anyway so we, we did the move bishop to g3 knight to e5 i wanted to play uh bishop b7 but i forgot to gotcha sorry my bad <laughs> it's okay man yeah usually in this opening the plans are very clear and that's why i like playing the tory attack especially in like a blitz game because you do knight to e5 you do f4 and then you like pawn storm your opponent and if they capture the knight ever you just take back with the f pawn you can rook lift you can double up the rooks on the f file you can do my strategy of doing bishop b1 queen c2 and trying to checkmate your opponent really fast by doing bishop h4 and then capturing this knight on f6 that's covering this h7 square like the plans are pretty solid and it's easy to understand even for a grandmaster so this move did happen queen e8 after queen e8 i clearly missed something do y'all know do y'all know what the best move is after queen e8 because I clearly did miss something here. I'm going to let y'all figure it out. Everyone hate the London, but got 61% win rate with it. Yeah, no, you can, You definitely can't get a, um, a clear win rate. Take the knight. Dark Frost, fro uh, Dark Frost Froze, you are saying take the knight? Okay, okay. I get that. Chess Kim, thank you for following. I am almost at 1,400 followers on Twitch. So I need y'all help with that. I need y'all help. That's the only opening my classmates know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of my favorites. What is your favorite opening? It's a Trumpowski and the Catalan. Right now. The Trumpowski and the Catalan. No, put more pressure. What do you mean? What is the best move in this position? Pin the knight to the queen? I need specific moves, guys. I need algebraic notation. Because in order for you to learn, actually, I need y'all to actually put the moves in here. I need y'all to actually put the algebraic notation in the chat. A lot of people are saying E4. E4, B5. Well, we can't do B5 here. I'm guessing you mean B4. Oh, Bishop B5. Is that is that what y'all want to do? Bishop B5? You like the Italian? Um, the Italian is good. When I used to be an E4 player, the Italian was a good opening. So, bishop b5. It was the move. But I discredited it because I thought that bishop d7 pretty much protects the, um, protects all my opponent's pieces. But apparently, there's like a threat here. Um, I didn't realize that I could do... Not that move? I'm, I must be chest blind right now. I, I'm missing a move and I'm... I'm just not seeing it. Oh, bishop takes, queen takes, queen a4. Knight takes bishop, queen takes, queen a4. Knight is not escaping. This would have been a complete wash. And that's why Beast kind of looks weird with the move of knight to c6. I felt a little bit odd, but I think I, sh I, think I had time to calculate that. But I was more focused on my plan that... I didn't decide to look for tactics, you know, and that's why I will forever stay at 2200. <laughs> that's why I'll forever stay at 2200 because I don't see tactics like that very quickly. Who said Bishop H7? <laughs> I don't know. Who said Bishop H7? 
Oh, wow. I didn't see that. I would have played F4 like you did. Yeah, F4 just seems like a very logical move to do. F4 just seems like a very logical move. So after F4, which I still had like a little bit of a better position here, but I'm thinking they kept that in the position for a while, right? So I just went along with my plan, not even thinking that like I could do bishop e5, queen a4 type of tactics. F takes on e5. Knight goes to d7. I won't learn openings and their ideas. Why not? That's like the best way to improve. Like in a hurry, you can gain like 100 elo just by learning openings. Like listen to Dan Daniel Naradisky. He, he definitely talked about it in his last live stream, guys. No one knows the opening name. This open is called the Tory attack with the bishop going to G5. And it kind of resembles the London. It's like the bigger brother of the, of the London system. And so after F takes on E5, E4, bishop takes, and... Did I miss a move here? So queen f3, they're saying that I probably had something a little bit better. They're saying that I probably had something a little bit better. I wonder, does queen a4 work here? Nope, nope. There's another move here that I missed. And just for like time's sake, we're just going to like look at the computer line. They're saying do the move, bishop takes on f6, bishop takes on f6. And then queen g4. They're saying this is just complete. Wait a minute. Is the computer bugging? Oh! The computer wants you to do a crazy move in this position, like bishop f6. Do y'all see this? They want you to do a, a crazy move, like bishop to f6. Would y'all have ever thought about a move like bishop to f6 here? KC Ninja? Yeah, I know. What, what type of move is Bishop to F6? This is like a Magnus Carlsen type of move here. But it kind of does make sense, right? When you look at it a little bit uh, a little bit more. It definitely isn't a capture or a check, so that wouldn't have popped in my head. Maybe in like a classical match. But even still, Queen F3 just seems a lot more natural. G takes on F6. Queen G4. I'm queen h4 you would have to see and then after blocking the bishop pretty much like the only move queen takes king and then rook lift and this is just a automatic attack queen uh, bishop f6 if they do nothing about it let's say they do like king h8 then the opponent could just keep on like hammering down on your pawns here queen h5 even if you go <laughs> go back to try to survive, then rook f3, rook g3, it get a awesome attack. You know what's crazy? Bishop f6 seems like a move that Woody Alien would have done. That seems like a brilliant move Woody Alien would have done. It opens up the king. Yeah, it does open up the king side. And I would have needed a lot of time to calculate a move like that bishop f6 even knight takes on f6 i thought was uh, an option but after e takes on f6 g6 they're saying just do the move queen f3 now and there's no way to defend the knight and that was the main purpose that was the main purpose woody would never i think he would i think woody alien would have found a move like this capture the knight yeah capture the knight either way is just a really bad option for the black pieces. Hey, Ant, how you doing? Capturing a knight either way. That's some Morphe heresy? Yeah, no. This is some computer stuff. Clearly, I'm not going to ever be seeing the move of bishop to f6 unless I'm like an elite grandmaster. So I did the most normal move, queen to f3. Still winning. Still like two points ahead. And they did pretty much the only move to give them a whole bunch of activity. A whole bunch of activity, right? So I think I played this pretty well. Queen takes. I was still winning. And then something happened after a while. Those pawns just started rolling in the center. I did this move. I captured that pawn. Still doing well. Okay, I thought it was the capture. We're going to figure out where, where I stopped doing well. We're going to figure out where I stopped doing well. Queen takes. Rook attacks the queen. Queen moves back. Where do y'all think I stopped? 
Where do, you, where do y'all think I did like a horrible move? Rookie, eight. these are all still good moves. Knight f3, pawn, pawn goes down. Okay, so bishop, I prop, I freaked out here because I was one minute down and I did the move bishop to f2, which, what type of computer move? Okay, I should have thought about knight to h4. Knight to h4 should have came to my mind. Completely slipped, chest blindness. Um, maybe they didn't have to cap. No, they they would have had to capture the knight. Top move though, computer move h4. That's what they wanted you to do. But I I could have I could have thought of knight to h4. All right. When it comes to computer review, we have to really ask ourselves, would a human actually do this? No, I don't think a human would have actually did um, H4, but definitely knight, knight H4 would have been a move that a human could have done here. And then after bishop to F2, and then this is where, this is where everything just went downhill. Jack Sark just followed. Which I had little time, so I sacrificed the exchange, pretty much making it equal again. I took the last pawn, which was horrible, and um, yeah. Now, I just played some really bad moves here. And actually, rook b3 equalizes here. So they did a really good job of the bad moves that I played. And this is why you just keep on playing chess here. Okay. <clears throat> Y'all ready to continue on to the next game? Thank you for all the follows. Uh, Jack, I appreciate you. Uh, such a bad mouse slip. Yeah, it, it was. Rook b3 actually equalizes. So, yeah, you would have been able to come back. So, let's face somebody a little bit tougher. Let's, let's face somebody a little bit tougher here. Tasuna, 2084. And we're 2200 in rapid. So, let's figure out exactly if we can take a person on like this. I can talk through the moves, but at the same time, I have to make sure that I stay like up on time. Oh snap, they're they're not here anymore. They're not here anymore. I'm gonna give them I'm gonna give them 10 seconds. I'm gonna give them 10 seconds to like rematch me. When we're when you're facing higher rated opponents, it's really important to stay up on time. Is really important because if you're not up on time or at least a little bit equal not past like 30 seconds at all um, then your opponent can potentially flag you get you into a position where you're in a worse position and you're doing bad on the clock <clears throat> and that's a lot of pressure that's a lot of pressure for you to deal with a lot of pressure all right so it seems like this guy isn't coming back uh, to Suna, what What's going on here? Yeah, I sent the rematch. I sent the rematch. <clears throat> I'm trying to play another game. Yeah, H4 is pretty wild, Glowing. I know, H4 is wild. <laughs> play the Jerome Gambit. Yeah, I don't know about the Jerome Gambit. How would Magnus salvage these scenarios? Well, Magnus is a pro, so he would have done it. He would have figured out something. He would have already, I, I think Magnus would have figured out H4, honestly. If I'm honestly thinking about that move of like kicking a knight around, yeah, H4 was a perfect move to do. So now our opponent is doing E6. Everybody's doing E6. I'm gonna do knight to F3. I'm gonna do the same line again, and then just figure out how they're going to defend against the Tory attack. I'm gonna do bishop G5. E3, C3, Bishop D3, Knight to D2, etc. Same stuff. They might actually do G5 here. But if they do G5, I, th I feel like your pawns are kind of overextended. But they could prove me wrong. That would make it an interesting game. I know it's, I know it's allowed, but in a human standpoint, I don't know. I don't know. So now I'm out of opening book and maybe my opponent is used to doing this. So we're going to have to take this very seriously. We're going to have to take this very seriously and we're going to have to stay up on the clock. All right. Y'all ready for this? So it's time to put on your seatbelt and start calculating. The knight can go to D2 here. 
Very passive, very safe move. And his name is John C. <laughs> I'm glad everybody's getting their John Cena. All right. Yeah. So we got knight to e5. Knight to h4 just looks bad. I'm not considering that. We got knight to g1, weirdly enough. The only thing that appeases me the most is knight to d5, but that does give them the option of doing the move um, d6. d6 attacking our uh, attacking our knight. We're gonna we're gonna go a little bit faster though. I don't know the intricacies of this position here, but we are just going to put the knight to d2. Because like I said before, you don't want to get too far below your opponent in time. It's very important not to get too far below in time against your opponent. The only weird part about um, playing this position is I'm going to do E3. I was going to do C3, but now I'm going to have to figure out. <laughs> it's funny because TikTok can hear those sounds now, but now I'm going to have to figure out. And those sound alerts is coming from Twitch, guys. So if you want to do sound alerts, no money at all. Um, it's just based on channel points. You can do sound alerts on my channel. Just like how they're doing. So they're really going ham right now. They're really trying to push up these pawns, trap the bishop, etc. I think if they push up too much, though, I could do bishop to f4 here. But I'm not usually a person to talk to when it comes to, like, figuring out how to defend. So this is actually a challenge for me, too. The moves that I am thinking of, though, is actually h3 already. h3. But I will have to consider h4 if I ever do h3. Because after h3, h4, bishop f4, they could potentially do g3. f takes. f takes, h takes, bishop takes again. And then my pawn searches run. They got crazy moves like rook to g8, etc. I could do, weirdly enough, bishop to h4 here. Just stop the pawns altogether and still do the move h3. And actually, I'm just going to autoplay that. I'm just going to autoplay that. I'm not going to calculate. It just seems right. Uh, it probably isn't the computer standards, but I really have to play a move. I don't, I don't want to think too much in the opening. I don't want to think too much in the opening because my opening moves should actually be like blitzed out. My opening moves actually should be blitzed out. <clears throat> so now I want to do the move C4. They could do Bishop B4, but then I got like A3, B4. So I could still do H3 too. I could still do H3 and try to like take these pawns, but it's really more important to like Try to figure out exactly what's going on with my pieces on the queen side. So c4, bishop takes on c4. If they do capture our c4 pawn, um, we are going to have to figure out what we're doing with our king. But it kind of depends on what our opponent is doing with their king. It kind of depends on what our opponent is doing with their king. So we're going to do a quick knight to c3. We're gonna do a quick knight to c3. If this knight ever passes, then we're just going to capture their bishop on e7. It kind of does look like a French type uh, type of structure, but they don't got a pawn on e4, so it isn't. And I hate playing like French type of structures just at any point. Bishop h. Yeah, I like to move bishop to h4. I like to move bishop to h4 here. Yeah, I think I did something that they're not used to because now they're finally thinking. They finally spent a minute to actually consider what's going on here. They did the move a6. Maybe they're preventing me from doing the move um, knight to b5, but they could be potentially set enough for b5 too. Um, I don't know exactly what is the right move here, so we're just gonna do a quick bishop to e7. I mean, bishop to e2. Bishop d3 would have ran into knight to b4, 
attack of my bishop, so I didn't want to do that. But I do want to disrupt these pawns here. And so now moves like h3 is actually possible. Maybe. Probably still not possible. Because once we open up the h file, our rook will be pinned. I mean, our bishop will be pinned to the rook. D takes. We got two options, take with the bishop or take with the knight. So take with bishop. They are definitely set enough to do the move. Um, they are definitely set enough to do the move um, B5 here. Knight takes. And so we're going to have to figure out what to do with the pieces here. Bishop takes. It's just two different strategies here. It's just two different strategies I have to think about. <clears throat> I don't really got time, so we're just going to do bishop takes and hope for the best. I'm already too far below on my opponent here, especially in the opening. Especially in the opening. Now, there is a key difference, though, if my opponent, if I do bishop d3 here, because if they do bishop, if they do knight to b4, I could bring it back and maybe do a3, kick it out. But this is, this is just a really weird position. We're just going to go bishop e7. Really quick move. I'm pretty sure it's still solid. They... They're like overextended on both sides here. And so their king might actually be staying in the center. Now, I do got moves like bishop takes. And I'm definitely going to have to like keep my eye on those moves. Like bishop takes, knight to e4, bishop goes back, etc. But there's no follow-up after bishop goes back. There's no follow-up at all. Let's just do a3. And we're doing a move a3 just to figure out what our opponent wants to do. If our opponent is just throwing pawns <laughs> we, we really need to we really need to actually see uh, what's their plan here yesterday i saw a post on insta where a guy finally got his first best move with a 4k blunders mistakes and misses and at the bottom there is something new as well probably how the guy won the game the last category was a group of crows what the heck I don't know. I'm a lot. Oh, OK. Wow. Um, yeah, that's that's something that's that's an interesting post there. Did Ben Feingold uh, reach out for a collab? No, he haven't. And if you know Ben Feingold and, you know, um, you're his mod on Discord or something. Hey, set that up. Just like how I got a, a collab with GM Canty. Set that up. A lot of people saying h3, but I really don't think that's a good move here because after h3 and they do like an approving move, h takes on g4, h takes on g4. And I would want to do the move like bishop takes on g4, but that rook is would be pinning our bishop to my rook on h1. And so maybe like maybe just maybe just depending on my opponent's next move, I could castle here. Okay, now they're trying to now they're trying to attack. This is when the tactics start. The middle game has finally started. I could decide on taking the knight on d5 here. But they don't have to recapture me back. What? Who? Hey, yo! Nadami, what's good? Shout out to Nadami, man. Make sure that you go follow her. Especially on um especially on Twitch. Let me Let me hurry up and do this. Let me hurry up and do this shout out right quick, guys. Thank, thank you for all the follows. Thank you for all the support, especially from our streams. Um I've been watching them. It's it's actually really entertaining. I wish mods was set up like that. I wish mods was set up like that. But I had to do my own style. Just followed. Okay. Thank you. Just gave you a shout out. Appreciate it. <clears throat> We're just going to hurry up and take this. <clears throat> and it's probably not the best move. But
but our opponent is still playing crazy a little bit. We can actually do H3 here. We'll actually do H3 here. Ooh, there. Okay, I just figured out a plan. Since they don't want to castle, we are going to like hone in on these dark squares here. Since they don't want to castle, we are going to hone in on their pawn weaknesses here. Mm, so that G2 pawn is what they're going after. I could still actually do H3 now. H3 and threaten to take. They are threatening to do the move, do this move. Oh, there's so much to think about and not enough time. Yeah, let's hurry up and do H3 just to figure out what our opponent wants to do here. Um, because this, this can't be that good. This can't be that good. And um, officially, I am low on time, but we actually have to think about like the plans that we have to do. If this knight ever moves, I do have rook c1 to attack this bishop on c6 because it's out there. It's exposed. So obviously that would be like a key point to remember. And then plus two, if they do want to overextend with f5, and I'm going to say overextend because when I'm playing my opponent, there's no respect. You know what I mean? There's not going to be like a kumbaya happening here. <laughs> like I'm trying to demolish you in your overextended pawns. Uh, I went away for five seconds to get some water and a raid. Yeah, one of the biggest raids happening, like happen right now. Because I know we had a raid yesterday that was pretty big, but Nanami came in with the 100, the 100 viewership, one of the vet, I would say one of the veterans uh, on chess.com. So hey, give her all the follows and a shout out. Wait, can you show your t-shirt? I want to see the maiden too. Here you go. Here's a good, like, maybe that's better. Okay. Now, if you're on YouTube, you can actually go back to the video and see exactly what's the move on the shirt. So they did do this. They did. They did do this. I wonder. <laughs> weirdly enough, I do have knight to G5 here, but I'm just going to go along with my original plan. If they do this, that would be crazy. Honestly, I think I would have to like give back the material if they did that. But I don't know if I would even capture if they did that. I'm like, wouldn't that be? <sighs> okay, 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 okay. This position could get crazy. I don't know if the tactics actually work for my opponent. But it's a really good human move if he does go for the sacrifices. It's a really good human move. Hi, H1. How's your uh, Canty Arena today? I beat you twice. Hey, why do you have to come here and say that? Why you got to be disrespectful and say that? You didn't have to. You did beat me twice, though, in, in the bullet arena. But guess what? I, I still got second place, so you're still the loser. <laughs> you're, still, you're still a loser, bro. Stick out my tongue. <laughs> You're still the loser, bro. So basically, they, they decided to cast on the king side. They basically decided to cast on the king side. This just became a very tactical position, especially after this move that I'm going to do now. Queen B3 has to be done. Queen B3 has to be done. So that's the that's the goal. In case any of this crap happens, that's going to happen. Yeah, but your IQ is 80. How do you know my I what? Oh, you're you're roasting the people for me. I don't have to roast them. Y'all can y'all can roast them for me. <clears throat> hey, whoever whoever does the best roast, uh, I'll I'll pin your comment. <clears throat> I can still take here. <laughs> this position is crazy, guys. 
This position is crazy. All right, <clears throat> I don't want my opponent to take, so we're gonna take. And this is just my intuition. This isn't like I didn't calculate it. Just intuition wise, and the, knowing the chess and knowing the chess principles that I know, we're gonna take take and then castle queen side. Because I can still castle. And this is one of those positions where it was really important to wait to see your opponent's plan before you castle. Did y'all forget that I could castle queenside? So, you have to be really careful pushing your pawns up so easily. Because every pawn push that you do creates a weakness. For example, if you did do e4 here, then you would have to, like, that's a big concession. E4, they take, you take back, and then that D pawn is just, I don't, I don't know, that D pawn is a um, isolated pawn. And so that's one of the things that you would have to think about um, in your calculation. Is your position ready to deal with that isolated D pawn? So the main goal here is obviously to open up the center. It's obviously to open up the center. What is the best way to open up the center? I haven't figured that out yet. Not gonna lie. I haven't figured that out yet. E4, they do have moves like knight to f4. I, I just don't, I don't like knight to f4. But, well, no, it just, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. I could, you know, f3 is probably a good move to do to begin out this, um, F3 is probably a good move to do. Uh... Okay, so I wanna open up their king side. So we're gonna do the move F3. We're gonna figure out how they wanna respond to that. F3 is kinda opening up things and we do have our increment to, to um, to remind ourselves with hand grenades open up the center <laughs> i know right but it's not so easy you can't just open up the center you have to think about your opponent's threats afterwards was the movie scream actually scary because my whole class screamed at dude bro <laughs> stop being self detriment wait a minute oh you're trying to roast that one guy was the movie scream uh, actually scary because my whole class screamed after seeing this uh, ghost face which i found surprising i look at you and think two billion years of evolution for this <laughs> six four but h1 has you seen the chess dogs i haven't seen them in a while well i think he's at the tournament right Isn't he at the Tata Still tournament? How do, how do y'all not know? Isn't that y'all boy? I'm thinking he's at the tournament. Man, this is, uh, I wanna, I don't have time to calculate knight takes and then queen takes on G2. I don't have time to calculate that. No, I'm, I'm gonna, we're gonna have to do bishop takes. There are some things that I was worried about after G takes on F3. All right, so they're definitely trying to beat me on time. But the thing is, I'm gonna bring the rook back to the center. They're definitely going faster to try to beat me on time. But if they're gonna go faster, then that's gonna um, provoke them not to do the best moves too. Finally do the move E4. I think it's thematic to do the move E4 now than it was beforehand. Because my wreck is on the same file as, as my opponent's king. Wow. Hmm. They want this. Hmm. 
This position just got crazy. I don't know what's going on anymore. It's not contained at all. Let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. I'm really thinking this is their king is literally in the center. Their king is literally in the center. <laughs> it's like, I don't know how this is good for my opponent. <laughs> You're going to have to show me. <laughs> You're going to have to show me, bro. Yay! Now it's all just about finessing. Because I think I have the better pieces, but it's just all about finessing. His name is John C. <laughs> Dude, guys, do y'all do y'all think that's that's really appropriate here? This isn't a GG yet. They they still got two rooks. Chill. Chill, guys. Chill. <laughs> I like these bishops and I like my bishop and knight. I just need more time. So I'm I'm actually just doing moves so I can just gather some more time. <laughs> I'm not lying. All right. This is this is usually my plan when I don't have enough time, especially if I have increment. What is the best way to, like, 
to finesse my opponent. I think it might be this. I'm not looking at the chat right now because I don't need moves suggested, guys. That's that's the last thing I need during the chess game. And then I can't do the move because that would be cheating. So even if that's the best move and I see it, I'm going to be like, I can't do the move. Y'all cheated. Okay, there you go. I was looking for the for the mess up and that that was it. Cuz that's a really hard position to try to defend. Good good job though. Good job. Woo! Ah. Y'all say y'all boy is in a 2200? Well, look at that game, guys. Would you have survived? Would y'all have survived because he played really well? I think there was a... I was probably losing at one point in time. All right. Let's look up the game review. I'm headed to bed. Nice to meet you. Man, nice to see you. I mean, nice to meet you too, Casey Nudge. <laughs> I'm surprised you're up this late, man. Like, go to sleep. <laughs> go to sleep. I'm glad you liked the stream too. I played at an 81% accuracy. My opponent played at a 76% accuracy. But that was a pretty nice game to show, like, how your opponent, like, if your opponent is attacking you, like, what to do, um, that will definitely be clipped for YouTube. Because that game was, that was stressful. All right, <clears throat> let's go through it. So it says that I had 13 inaccuracies, four mistakes, um, two misses. My opponent had one miss, uh, five mistakes, and 11 inaccuracies. All right, let's get started. So we got this move d4, e6, knight to f3, bishop g5, and then they actually committed with the move g5 in this position, which g5 is actually a book move that I'm going to have to study because... I'm out of nobody usually plays G5 because it's it's such a it overextends your pieces, first of all. And then secondly, I mean it's really hard to play. Uh, it's, it's really hard to play, especially as a human in that type of position. 2204 ELO. Yep, yep. Where Brandon watches at and Vector. Um, bro, can I play please? Uh, anonymous, I don't know. I don't know. You just have to challenge me, guys. So, after the move G5, which is book, bishop G3, G4 here, and then I did the move knight to D2. Knight to D2 was not the best move, because I think maybe knight to E5 was the best. Yeah. So, knight to E5 was best. I'm going to have to remember that. Because knight to E5 does attack the pawn, but I was looking at, okay, what if they do D6? Where am I knight going to go next? And, yeah. Usually, it's good to be prepared for positions like that, rather than, like, doing the you don't want to do the most aggressive moves if you don't know the opening <laughs> i'm only you should only be um you should only do the most aggressive moves if you're are for certain that you are in a either equal or winning position yeah hit those z's i am not human <laughs> detroit human so dang everybody's challenging so after the move h5 I did bishop h4, which is the best move. Just to let everybody know, I did the best defense. After bishop h4, c4, and then knight to c3, and we started developing pieces. Bishop e e2, not the best move. So they probably did want bishop to d3, maybe. I'm, I'm checking to see. They probably did want bishop to d3. It's taken a while. I'm not going to lie. Um, we're just going to go to the analysis very quick. Actually, evaluation. First of all, so Bishop D3 wasn't even a move that they wanted. So the best move that they wanted was not Bishop E2, but it was actually Rook to C1. 
um, they wanted g3. Those are computer moves, though. I'm not ever going to add those. And so after bishop e2, because you want to develop pieces, and I wanted to do the move h3 just at the right moment. So after d takes on c4, bishop takes on c4, b5, bishop goes back, because let's get it down on time. And sometimes, most players don't know this, but sometimes it's good for you to uh, dark frost froze. A, see you later, man. Have a good night. I appreciate it. I'm probably going to be, no, no, I'm not. I'm probably going to play a couple more games. But anyway, it's not important to um, find the best move in the position sometimes. Sometimes it's important to find the second best move. And then plus two, I didn't play the best move here because I knew that if I, like imagine me playing that super sharp, that, that super sharp middle game with lesser time. I would have definitely lost in that position. That should be a good indicator of like, hey, do not get below on time against your opponent. That should be a really good indicator of that. Yeah, I'm reviewing the game now, guys. So after bishop takes, have to. Knight takes. Knight went to e4. I thought this was good because um, knight goes to c5. But the computer, you know, they have their moves, whatever. Uh, it... Unless it's changing the bar in a dramatic way, I'm not even going to consider it. So knight to e4, they did bishop c6, I did h3, which did equalize the position a little bit. Maybe they wanted to do something more solid like rook c1, knight to c5, etc. Um, after h3, they did f5, exclamation mark, which did equalize. I did knight to c5 here. Very high level game, actually. King f7. Queen b3 because I wanted to pin that knight to the pawn on e6. I wanted that to always be an option by me to capture that pawn on e6. I wanted that to always be an option. And it makes it a little bit harder for my opponent to actually calculate those lines um, of doing moves potentially like e5 when that pin is on the king on f7. And so after queen b3, queen g8. H, uh, H takes G, H takes G, and then I castle queen side, which is really important. And I think I was better in this position. It's saying that I'm like 0.6 right now, not winning, just a little bit better. Just a little bit better. Anonymous is about to burst in tears. I Hopefully he doesn't. I'm sorry, Anonymous. That was a fun roast battle. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. So... And let me see what TikTok is hollering about, because for some reason, my phone isn't showing all the comments. OK, so y'all just listening. So after Castle Queen side, which was good. And my I mean, the bar is actually agreeing with my moves now. And I'm, I'm accumulating those small advantages that I always talk about. So after the move F3, I was trying to open up the position, but clearly not the best move here because they wanted to do the engine move. Just a round of applause. Rook takes on h8. They wanted to do rook takes on h8. Rook takes on h8. This is what craziest thing ever. I thought I was a pawn grabber. But just look at this engine move and see like if you would have actually done this. Rook takes on h8. Rook takes on h8. Knight takes on a6. That's what they wanted me to do here. Would y'all have done this in this game? Grab the pawn. Like, is is this actually uh, like something that we should be considering right now? Yeah, I know for sure you're higher rated and I'm just clowning. <laughs> OK, they're doing something else. All right. Your knight was trapped and ineffective. Yeah, a little bit, but it was keeping an eye on this uh, on this pawn on E6. So I didn't really want that knight to be out of the game. So after the move f3, g takes on f3, I did bishop takes on f3, but I guess I did miss a, um, I missed a big move here. And they, they're they saying I should have did knight takes on f3. I just didn't have a good reply to after um, queen takes on g2. I couldn't find it in time, but I guess this does work. Knight, knight e5 check, the king goes up. Thank you for the follows, guys, on Twitch. I appreciate it. We're almost to 1,400, I think, or we already passed it. I don't know. 
knight to e5 and then they want me to do the move bishop to f3 and these moves especially that move would have been really hard to find like really hard to find with one minute on the clock so that was definitely not going to be found unless i was like a super gm or something so i went the safe route and i did bishop takes on f3 i'm glad i didn't do g takes on f3 because that was the worst route of them all so after bishop takes on f3 queen goes up and that was actually a good move to keep an eye on that d pawn so i don't do e4 without like any repercussions but you know as h1 i know i had to move bishop to h5 which was the best move in the position i didn't have time to calculate g4 i didn't have time to calculate knight to d3 knight to e5 but i did the thematic move rook to <laughs> rook h to f1 which is still winning you know it's still good <laughs> i mean your average stats oh okay y'all still just talk to each other what does h1 mean um you gotta have to like watch my perpetual podcast you win material that way well you're up on pieces after that point well i i think i like actually my move rook h to f1 i think that's a really human move just to put your rook on the same file as your opponent's king before you do g4 here so actually after rook h to f1 now the move that i did actually worked e4 e4 actually worked i don't know why this isn't like a, a double x clam i don't know why at all but it should have been and then the position got crazier after this because instead of moving a knight somewhere which i thought he was just going to move the knight to f4 here he took the pawn in the center the bait everything is being attacked right now everything all these calculations this is like y'all don't understand in the classical match i would have calculated all these lines and figured out which one was the best one pawn is like attacking both of these this knight can probably like hop in somewhere to check this king this queen is still on the same diagonal this knight is like they got some squares to hop on this rook is on the, the same file as our opponent's queen this rook is on the same file as our opponent's king everything is going on here h1 i love your vids thank you thank you mega i appreciate you man and thank you for like chatting too i know that's your first time i did the one and only best move knight takes on e6 one and only best move in this position weirdly enough wait a minute hey explain yourself right now or you're gonna get banned why are you saying cope why are you saying cope bro because you gotta have to say something funny afterwards or you're gonna get muted so give me a response in like the next couple minutes or so all right found the only best move knight takes on e6 in this position tiktok chat like twitch chat is cool youtube chat is cool just twitch the tiktok chat i, I had to like treat them like children and i'm pretty sure they're like grown people weirdly enough all right <clears throat> um yeah that's just a tiktok chat man they be doing they be doing other stuff all right so after knight takes on e6 perfect fine king takes pawn takes knight takes i didn't see knight takes i seen bishop takes not knight takes and then i had to find the move which i did the move knight to e4 <laughs> i did the move knight to e4 not the best move there's actually better queen c2 crazy enough Caden thought i was 26 <laughs> queen c2 imagine doing queen c2 with 36 seconds on the clock Angel man thinking just followed. i thought she didn't read this just <laughs> actually that's pretty funny just know i'm reading your chat on tiktok i got you right here on my phone i'm not abandoning you i just got a twitch chat i got a youtube chat like 
just be glad that I'm getting to your chats. I'm not even looking at the Twitch. No, I'm, I'm on Twitter too. I'm on Instagram and I'm on um, Facebook. I'm not even looking at those chats at all because I don't have any way to look at those chats. So just be like, I mean, just be appreciative that I'm actually able to look at the words that you are um, like trying to say to me. But anyway, Knight to E6 was a good find. Queen C2 would have been awesome to find afterwards. Um, even doing like King B1 here is kind of crazy. I guess the queen is pinning the knight to the king. So I really didn't have to do anything crazy but King B1. Um, Rook FE1 was a good move too, which I did see. But I didn't know what to do after the king moved here. Which Knight E4 after the king moves to D6 just looks really beautiful. That's some woody alien type of stuff. I think he would have found that. Knight e4. Pretty solid. It does allow him to trade queens with the king in the center. Which I did trade. And then I found the only move. Knight to c5. Exclamation mark again. Brilliant! Well, it's not, it's not a double exclamation mark. So I guess that sucks. I don't be sacrificing pieces that much when I be playing chess games. So, <clears throat> thanks, Instagram. Yeah, so thank the other platforms that I actually get to pay attention to y'all. Th thank them. Uh, do you play professionally? Well, this year I'm going to start going to tournaments again. Knight goes to c5, checking the king. I take, I take that bishop. I was thinking about actually moving one of these rooks, but it wasn't a good move. And... I should have, right here, been brave and taken the rook on a8. I should have been brave and taken the rook on a8. But I really didn't want to deal with the knight at the end game because the knight can be a really tricky piece. The end game that we did get was actually pretty simple than the end game that we could have got here. Y'all know how tricky the knights, uh, knights can be. One fork can ruin your whole position. And so that's why I just took their knight, which is still winning, but it's going to take a little bit more work. So after rook to d8, not the best move. They should have defended the uh, the pawn, probably, or attack this pawn with going to g8 here, because I couldn't uh, I couldn't take that pawn on b5 without them taking the g pawn, and that would have made the game a little bit more complicated. So I did the move g4. Take that pawn. I took that pawn. Move the king up. Defended my king. I had 16 seconds left. I had the game back up the time that I that I once had. Like I had the game back up the thinking time that I once had. I wasn't gonna do this rook trade because that could have potentially been a draw. Just imagine us actually doing this. That could have potentially been a draw. I could have finessed my way like out of this one too, but keeping the pieces on the board was really important here. And then I did a few moves and yeah, these moves wasn't really important because I was just trying to gain back up on time. I was back at 38 seconds. If this was a 10-0, I would have definitely lost, but at the same time, I would have played a little bit faster anyway. And then we finally got this move done. And they messed up because they should have went actually to F8 or D8 here. And I was planning on taking the pawn either way. But they messed up with putting their king on the same diagonal as the bishop. And then I took advantage of that with this move, rook to E1. All right. Very intense game. Could have actually spent more time analyzing that was, dang my mic was up that that much and y'all was just dealing with it man y'all y'all the goat i could have spent more time analyzing it but i want to get to like one more game before i head out i want to get to one more game and don't say that i don't face um people over 2000 elo anymore the do the click Make the clip on Twitch <laughs> of me winning that. Go back in time. <laughs> Actually, you can't go back in time anymore. I need to start telling y'all to make the clip. If, if somebody did make the clip of Zam me winning that, just I would be so happy. I would be so happy. I would have taken a night too. 
Yeah, most definitely. The knight is a very tricky piece. I haven't played chess in forever. Think you just brought me back. Hey, hey, thank you, thank you. And if I did bring you back, I have a whole lot of playlists on my TikTok account. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty much everywhere. Just go to any one of my social media accounts and you're gonna see a whole bunch of chess content, a whole bunch of chess openings that you can learn from. So there is another person here that we're gonna face. It's, it's a 10-5 game. His name is Me Wee Wee. Me Wee Wee. And he's 1300. So, I'm, oh snap. He's not here. And I'm going to give you 30 seconds to respond in the chat and tell me if you're here or not. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Oh, is he here? He's going to probably play uh, his first move in a minute. All right, he is here. Okay, so in the beginning, I played a 600, I played a 2000, and now I'm playing a 1300. Well, we're just gonna round it up and say 1400, because 1379 is basically 1400. I actually really like these late night streams. I don't sleep. <laughs> I'm glad you like LZ. And Vicious Content, what's good? How you doing? My buddy uh, got me into chess. Been watching you to catch up to him in 1K rating. Let's go. That'd be awesome. And just for everybody to know, if you do exclamation mark coaching, I do offer um, one on one coaching sessions, like 30 minute, one hour lessons. The first time um, that we do a lesson, it would only be $20, just to let everybody know. <clears throat> and that would be my cheapest option until I actually have like um, a, a paid community where everybody can join and like watch the content that I have that would be specifically for you to improve from zero ELO. All the way to 2000 <clears throat> you're gonna see h1 chuck <laughs> chuck chess pieces from the board in the um in the bg on youtube <laughs> most likely yeah you're gonna see me you're gonna you're gonna be entertained but at the same time you're gonna understand okay i learned the new opening i have been begging for 20 minutes i'm sorry anonymous that's why i really don't do these rapid games that much because i don't really get to play a lot of people and plus, two hours already passed. Um, just to tell y'all a secret, especially the people that's been on TikTok that um, know Lamina, me and Lamina is actually going to be doing a collaboration tomorrow. Me and Lamina will actually be doing a collaboration tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. He's a 2400, I think he's 24 something um, on chess.com possibly already a 2500 because he was grinding when i was seeing him stream yep i am playing the um the sif dang it i still can't say this word i seen the video i seen the, uh, the pronunciation video oh man how you say this word this this seveshnikov the Seveshnikov. I'm just gonna call it that. The the Seveshnikov. I'm yeah. I'm just gonna call it that. Seveshnikov. But this is the last. I'm sorry, man. I have zero elo, but I'll be H one three zero. If you got zero elo, you're definitely not beating me. You're definitely not beating me. Now he's a twenty four hundred. Yeah, very strong opponent. And we're actually going to be playing some games too. So, like I said before yesterday, if you don't do, if you're going to play this opening, you have to do the move knight to b5 to actually um, put pressure on my side as the black pieces here, because I can equalize very easily. And even if I lose this game, which is which is very possible, I'm already happy right here because I know that I equalized. So, if you're going to play this opening and I play the move e5, you have to do the move knight to b5 in a hurry. That's like a guaranteed move that you have to do. Because now I can get the move d5 in, and usually once black gets to move d5 in this opening, you can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it this, the Sufishnikov. I'm gonna call it that. <clears throat> I'm pretty happy. My pieces are very vibrant. That knight is being attacked. They're gonna have double pawns on the C file. They are gonna have some type of attack on the king side. 
and that's one con for the black pieces. But I found out I can I can defend it pretty easily. I can defend it pretty easily. This the uh dang it, how do you say it? Dang it, somebody sent me a video. Somebody sent me a video on my Discord. Let me let me bring it up right quick. I'm gonna bring up the video on my Discord. Somebody was the goat. Copy text. All right, we're gonna learn how to say this word because it's complicated. I don't, I don't ever say words like this. Sveshnikov. 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 S s they're saying it like it's an N in between it, but it's a V. So I, I'm just gonna say it like that. Sveshnikov. 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 Yeah, that's a hard word to say. I'm, I'm going to need like an easier translation of that. <laughs> I'm going to need like an easier translation of that. We're going to take knight to c3. We're going to double up the pawns on the c file. We're going to double up those pawns. Well done, h1. Yes, Shnefshikov. Yep, we're going to say it like that. We're going to go bishop e7, and then we're going to castle kingside. And yeah, this position is completely fine for the black pieces. But yeah, I have... Um, Platinum membership, so I got free puzzles as well. Yeah. Hey, cool. It's just, it's literally Shnefshikov. It's literally how's uh, how's written. Hey, bro. Chill. Just because I can't say a word doesn't mean I need you to judge me. Doesn't mean I need you to judge me. I'm not gonna lie. This is actually a new move that I've never um, faced before. So I'm out of book. This is actually a new move. Because now I got to contend with if I castle, they could do bishop takes on c6, pawn takes on c6, knight takes on e5. So I'm going to have to have something prepared for that, right? They're, like, I can't just allow you to take my e-pawn. I guess I could get away with it, maybe. But I don't think I want you to. I could do the move queen to c7. Queen to c7 is definitely an option. Um, queen to b6 is definitely an option. Maybe. Queen b6. But then our opponent could do rook to b8, a b1, which is pretty irritating. I could do bishop to g4 right now. Bishop g4, pinning the knight to the queen. And that would actually be, I think I actually like that. Yay! There's so many options here. I think I can get away with castling though, if I really wanted to. My back hurts. And my opponent is up on time too. <clears throat> We're gonna have to look at what to do after um, Bishop to B5 and figure out exactly what's the what's the correct move to do there. Cause I don't want my pawns to be like discombobulated. So the positional side of me wants to do the move Queen to C7. We're gonna do Queen to C7. Bishop takes, queen takes, knight takes on e5, queen can take on um, g2. I think we're still fine here. I think we're still fine here. Cheese champ, hey, how you doing? This is going to be my last game. I have been doing full analysis on each one of the games that I've been playing the viewers. So, yeah. We're going to castle. If they still want to take, then now it's going to be a different capture. It's not going to be with the queen. Was queen d5 good? Potentially, yeah. I was looking at that too, but then I would have ran it to like c4. I would have had to calculate that. 
I would have had to calculate C4. Right now, I could do bishop to g4. I could do bishop to g4. I think I can get away with doing f6 here, but I don't know. I would have to calculate this check. <clears throat> There's a lot of moves that could be done here. Bishop g4, bishop takes, g takes, rook takes. That could happen. But I think I can take that rook. We're going to play a little bit quicker because I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to lose on time. I don't want to lose on time. But there is tactics in the air though that we're going to have to watch out for. They can do that. That that is definitely an option, but I don't know if that's good for them though. But that is an option though. I did consider that. Um, that is giving away a pawn, but at what cost though? Okay. Let's see what they got here. They can take. Yeah, at what cost are they giving away that pawn? We're gonna go queen to c7 because we still have to protect this bishop on e7. We still have to protect this bishop on e7. They can capture our bishop right now. Take it with the f-pawn does look good because you get the rook. You get the rook developed. But I'm my person. That's just not my personality, guys. I'm sorry. It's just not my personality. But there were some interesting lines to do there. I'm a pretty risk free type of person. And I already know that. That's why I'm just going to capture with the H-pawn. I'm thinking this is fine, too. And my opponent is up in material. But <clears throat> they got double C-pawns. I see you. Okay. So <clears throat> they do got double C-pawns. And generally, those are like... It's considered one pawn. It's considered like, it's not considered two points. It's considered one point because they're going to have to defend those pawns pretty much the, the entirety of the rest of this game. Bishop takes on C3 is better than knight takes on C3. Ah, I always like the lines of, I try knight takes on C3. Um, I always like the lines with, wait a minute, didn't I do knight takes on c3? Oh, bishop takes on c3. You're saying bishop takes on c3 is better than knight takes on c3. I always like the lines of knight takes on c3 so that I still have the double bishops while my opponent still has, um, uh, while my opponent still has the weakness on the queen side. But I could look into it. There's probably something that black can get trapped by. I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised. So right now I could do bishop to f6. To attack my opponent's pawns. We're going to do that really quickly because we're at three minutes. <clears throat> we're going to do bishop to f6. Probably going to do b6 here. And then we're going to do rook to c8. Very simple. Attack my opponent's pawns. And then potentially maybe go behind here and attack my opponent's pawns there. That is an interesting move. I think I have b6 here, though. I think I have b6 here. I could have did b6 first. I did this move pretty quickly, and I don't know if that's the right move. To be honest. I think I should have did b6 first and then bishop c5. 
But that's generally what happens if you are down on time. That's generally what happens. Could I versus you? Uh, not this live stream because this is gonna be my last game. But tomorrow, uh, try to verse me. I might be doing. Uh, I might be doing a tournament with everybody. Still can't believe that game from the two streams ago. What what game are you talking about? What game are you talking about two streams ago? Is that the one of the games that you won when I was on the board? The Borsi just followed. The Borsi and Zach Lacken. Thank you for the follow. Wait, H1, are you wearing your own merch right now? No, Zach this is Lacken actually this is actually from another company. They sent it to me a long time ago. Surprisingly, they sent it to me a long time ago. I f I don't know if the I don't know if it's still up though. Josh and Josh just FBI, open up! I wanted to get more shirts like this, but I don't know if that Instagram page is still up. I'm gonna have to find them. H1 is 11 uh, 1100 game where people that I cheated I won on time. Oh nah, yeah, you you just won on time. Because I couldn't like actually do the moves on the board. I was like showcasing it. But I figured out a way where I can like go on the phone and actually finish off the game when I'm under one minute. So nobody's gonna be beating me on time anymore. I'm looking at the chat too, guys. Like this it's just a chat. I don't want anybody accusing me of like cheating during the live stream. Wish I had a chest shirt like that. I mean, wish you had a chest t-shirt, not gonna lie. Hey, look it up. And then plus, put in exclamation merch. I do have merch. Uh, uh, it says chest knowledge with H1, but I mean, the designs are pretty cool. I, the designs, I like them. I wear them all the time. Ah, oh, man. I need to stretch out my legs. My opponent has been thinking for a while, so they might be thinking about like a thematic move here. Their pawn structure is kind of whack. I will say that. And I'm just being truthful, you know. Um, <clears throat> but they do have some pros in the position other than their pawn structure. They do have a lot of activity. And they do have a future king side attack, like I was going to mention too. Because these pieces can come to the king side very quickly. So now I'm going to have to think about moves like h5 g5 etc that's why i was saying i should have did b6 first and then bishop c5 so that i have some attack on the king side now <clears throat> and they have options of possibly doing bishop f4 in the future but they can't do it right now because i could take that they can't do it right now XD underscore Cyrex underscore two just followed. That is a confusing move though, because can I just take that pawn? Honestly, I don't like think y'all would blunder like that. So I'm thinking that he's that he wants to open up the H file and get an attack off with the rook. I don't know how good that is though. <clears throat> I honestly don't know how good that is. You know what? We got to do a move quickly. So we're just going to go along with our plan and just like hammer down on the weaknesses on the C file. I'll hop on Anonymous. <laughs> what are you talking about? Play a match then with Anonymous and see who's going to win. Tell me who won. Our opponent could possibly get a big attack with this move H5, but I'm thinking we can just trade pieces off and get into like a balanced end game. Do you not want us to suggest moves? No, not really. But, I mean, y'all can suggest moves. I'm just going to have to, like, turn my head away from the chat. Y'all can suggest moves, though. I'm not... Not exactly looking at it. <clears throat> can I do this? Isn't that... Isn't that just a move? Isn't that just a pawn? Are we getting into some like rook rook end game? Oh no, they went like the the super solid route. <clears throat> well, they think this is a, a super solid route, but I'm gonna have to remind them that like I'm the I'm the end game maestro. That's what they call me in the streets. 
So take, take, rook over here. Or I could do rook up here first. They don't call me the, the end game maestro. They call Franz that. I can take, take, here, here, here. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't want to get into a position where, um, you know, I'm just going to take. <clears throat> I don't want to get too low on time either. I don't want to get too low on time. Mm, now I'm in this weird position. We are going to protect this pawn. I, I did want to take a chance and actually put two of the rooks on the second uh, on the second rank. But I think they kind of I didn't know who's faster. Honestly, I didn't have enough time to I could still do it, though. The, the option is still there to do that. The option is still there to do that. Mm, okay. So now they're going for it. So this actually might be a draw. But I guess we'll never know. Okay. So I got a few defenses here. You're just gonna have to figure out what my opponent wants to do. Because I can protect my pawn like this, like so. I could do checks too. Mm. I, I just don't want it to be losing. I think this is defending though, oddly enough. I think they might have got a draw out of this position because I should have went for it. I could actually still go for it. I don't know. Let's see how let's see how he plays this endgame. I got 19 seconds left. I'm gonna have to like actually concentrate. You need to study coordinates, not gonna lie. What do you mean I need to study coordinates, bro? Unless you can beat me 100% of the time, you don't tell me what to do. I'm your granddaddy. You're not mine. <clears throat> I'm your granddaddy. Gucci underscore pigeon 372 just followed. Thank you for the follow, appreciate it. Okay, so now we're in this end game. Oh, wow, they're really going for that why are they going for this Madi Mataku just followed why are they what are they doing I don't know what they're doing. But we are going to try to push our G <laughs> our queenside pawns. That's that's going to be our main goal. Let's see if they know their rec pawn end games. <clears throat> can you convert this kid? Uh most likely I can. Because I know this Rook Pond endgame like the back of my head. Alright, let's do it. Let's try to convert it, guys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
<clears throat> the only problem is I think this is already a theoretical draw. So that kind of sucks. Yeah, I'm pretty cock. I mean, if you're going to play chess, you got to be a little bit cocky. Are you almost a master? No, I'm not almost a master. <clears throat> I mean, I think I'm I think I'm pretty close to a national master though. I'm not going to lie. Um, but to play chess, you got to be a little bit cocky. Just think about remember when Magnus Carlsen faced against um Garry Kasparov for the first time when he was around like 13. Do you think that he respected Garry Kasparov when he almost got a draw? And that was a game that he almost won against a world champion. No, he didn't respect them. That's that's the answer. He didn't respect them. Let's figure out what they want to do. They could easily mess up here. <laughs> I'm going to try to get a win. <laughs> I think they might be surprised that I'm trying to do this, but I'm going to try to get a win. I did F6 because I didn't want to be like, I didn't want to have the, um, the double pawns to try to, to try to win it with. So I would much rather try to win this way. So now I know I can definitely finesse a win in this position. I can, I can finesse something in this position. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, you're now nah, this is you're going to have to do something about this position. Mm hmm. You got to learn your rook pawn in games. You should have kept that pawn on the end. You were so close to a draw, too, and it kind of sucks. I think you're still kind of in draw territory. It's just a little bit harder. I have to make sure that this wasn't a a loss. I think this is losing territory now. Nah, usually like your opponent starts like doing bad moves in the end game. I mean, just to be blunt, because chess is a blunt game. But that's why I tell generally people, if you're bad at end games, you have to study rook pawn end games. If you want to do better at rook, if you want to do better at end games, you got to study rook pawn end games. Because if you don't, then you're gonna get into like weird positions like this where you, you kind of like forced this position to happen with what you did, and now it's losing. Not saying I can't still draw this, but this is definitely losing. <laughs> I'm unfollowing if you draw or lose. <laughs> yeah, this nah, this shouldn't be a draw or a lose. <laughs> I got too many bonds right here. <laughs> Honestly, y'all should unfollow if I get a draw or a loss in this position, to be honest. Hmm. I gotta make sure I'm doing these moves correctly, though. Yeah, F pawn is a draw. I mean, no, F pawn is a win. G pawn, if I just had the G pawn here, it would have been a draw without the F pawn. <clears throat> it's a draw because of this sequence that I'm about to do right now. So not F2 right now, but actually the move 
Rook H2 makes it a win. Because now I'm threatening F2, Rook H1, and then Queen, or like take their Rook. Ooh, okay, okay, they're fighting a little bit. They're fighting a little bit. I think they're kind of in like a Zugzwang position now, right? I still, f I still forget these drawn games sometimes. L let me think about it. See what they're gonna do. They're defending like their life depends on it. I'm thinking that works. Yeah, I'm thinking that works. I had to actually think about it. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, what? There you go. Okay, good game. I did not want to draw that. He was about to unfollow. You're actually all right in this game. Yeah. Simplify that. Good game. The time had we stressed out for a second. Yeah, I was kind of stressed out of the time too, but I could have like repeated moves and the position would have changed. I could have did. One, 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 one just followed. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Nice finish, dude. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Potatoes. Thank you for the follow. Thank you. And that's how you play Rook End Games. I think that could have been a little bit cleaner, though. 76, 76 just followed. I think that could have been a little bit cleaner. Let me see. So when they did right here. Oh, Rook B2. Rook goes up to C1. Rook G2. King goes over. Rook H2. And then F2. That's what I was missing. So it's check first. I was supposed to check into that position of F2, King F1, Rook H1. I wasn't just supposed to like, because if you don't check into the position, your opponent can stop you by doing the move Rook to C3. Rook end games is just hard, man. And Grandmasters know it like the back of their head. Grandmasters know it like the back of their head. I think me, yeah, he was definitely nervous because this, so this position right here was a draw. I'm pretty confident. Okay, it wasn't a draw then. Let me see. If they put the pawn all the way back here, because I can't go, I can't go anywhere along this F file. So maybe here? No, okay, that's definitely a draw. So you have to play really precise to actually win this. You have to play really precise. Okay, you can't give away that pawn. King G2. Oh, okay. I guess it wasn't a draw, but Yeah, maybe they're just down one too many pawns. If they had like one more pawn on the G square, then it could have been a draw. But I didn't know that until they actually pressed forward. So they could have still kept on playing in this position. But allowing me to take your outside pass pawn for this G7 pawn is not the way to go. Chessmaster, what's up? How you doing? I think he was nervous too, but that, that was a really good uh, opponent there, especially for... I always worry about y'all 1300s because y'all have to face off against people like him. Like, I don't know how I would have done it. I don't know how I would have done it if I had to go back and face people like that in 1200. <laughs> it seems like y'all are a lot better nowadays, um, especially in the 
between like the 1200 to 1500 level than when I was there a decade ago. Because when I was there a decade ago, man, sheesh, I was nowhere near on a level of actually competing with um, a 2200. Back of their head. Jesse, yeah, you're welcome, man. Yeah, I, I commend y'all, man. Y'all have a long road ahead of you, especially if you're within that 1,000 to 1,500 road, because y'all got players like this guy. But anyway, like I'm going to say always in this opening, the most like um, confrontational way is doing the move knight to b5. That, that puts the most pressure on the opponent, because if you do any other move, then it's kind of like, like, what are you doing in the position? Now, one of... Um, one of the players here, I forgot I forgot their name, but they did say that instead of doing knight takes on c3, bishop takes on c3 is better. And then after b takes on c3, castle king side. Which the computer does say that this is better, but I found out that like I don't like playing against the two bishops without one of my bishops. I don't I don't like playing against the two bishops. It doesn't seem like an advantage to me. That's why I like taking with the knight to c3, b takes on c3, and doing the bishop e7 line. Because it's completely equal, and I have the two bishops against their structural weaknesses. And those structural weaknesses actually paid off in the end. If they didn't have that, then I would have I would have honestly lost. They disconnect it, but has a winning position. Knight c3 is the move. This is from the, the Shnevchikov. Master database plays knight to c3, goes back to uh, goes back to e7. Where's this net? Where's the master database? I can't find it right here for some reason. Let me see. All right. <clears throat> Master database. Master database does say knight takes on c3. They say that that is the second most popular move. Knight takes on c3 is the second most popular move. And bishop takes on c3 is the third most popular move. Do you have any tips for a king and two bishops versus a king and a rook? I've always struggled. Yeah, those imbalances, you're just going to have to look at specific games to help you out with that. Because Grandmasters have already deciphered those um, type of games. Like, look up Jeremy Silman um, positions. Uh, he has so many books on imbalances. It's ridiculous. I mean, one, if you buy a premium membership from chess.com, they, they have a... Uh, I forgot who goes over imbalances in chess. I forgot her name. She has like purple hair. T Tata. Uh, I forgot her name, but she goes over imbalance material balances in chess, and it's it's actually really good. It's actually really good um, to learn from. Or you can just go do the Jeremy uh, Jeremy Seelman stuff, and that works out too. I'm about 1600 with the 1700 peak. Uh, that end game was amazing. If it works, man, it works. Exactly. Exactly. So let's go through this game right quick. Because I actually think... Okay, this was the position that I wanted uh, to learn from. This was the position. There's There hasn't been any master games here. So castling does work. The computer, the computer says it. Because after bishop takes on c6, b takes on c6. If... White gets too greedy, then we have the move um, Bishop F6 attacking this pawn. Um, Bishop F6 attacking this pawn. They're going to have to do the move F4 because if they move back, um, there's a move Bishop A6 preventing the opponent from castling. So I could have just castled. I could have just castled. Queen D5 was a move too. I just didn't know what to do after um c4 but queen e4 check would have been just as good bishop e3 etc so those are the main moves to remember not saying that queen c7 didn't go good for me because i think i think a lot of moves actually work here even bishop g4 they're saying bishop g4 is a top move even with this sequence of taking the pawn so queen c7, castle king side, bishop g4, and then we got into a ultra balanced position. 
and I did bishop f6, b6, I attacked the pawn some more because why not, in 2000 rapid and nearly, but not 2100 in, rap, in, in blitz, yeah, yeah, rapid, so the longer time control it is, the harder it's going to be for you to like ra raise up in the rating, so if you're, if you're at a certain rating at rapid, that's kind of close to your official rating. That's going to be closer to your official over the board rating than it will be for Blitz. G5, Bishop takes on C C3, Bishop takes, Queen takes, Queen takes, Rook takes. And then we got into this end game. One thing that I didn't know is if I should have took this pawn or not, or if I should have done Rook to D, uh, Rook to D8. Because after Rook takes... I wanted to do the move rook takes on c2, rook takes on b6, and then like rook d1, and I wanted to be the one attacking instead of my opponent. But then I seen my opponent doing this move and then threatening checkmate. That's what I seen in the future. And this is a automatic draw for the black pieces. And I didn't want that. That's why I didn't go here. And so I just did rook c2, and I just suffered through this position. Gladly, gladly, they gave me a rook trade. I really don't like rapid, not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all you fast people who comes from Canty streams probably don't like rapid, because y'all be playing 30 second chess. No, I love rapid. I love rapid and blitz, because it's, it's real chess. This is where real chess is made from. If I was him, I would have never traded rooks. Trading out one rook released the pressure off of me, so they should have definitely tried to rush up with the king first and see what I was going to do about that. Because I couldn't move my rook off the F file, or you would have had like some demolishing checkmate sequence along the seventh rank. So rook goes to b7, rook is changed, rook takes on h4, rook takes on b6. And then I get this extra pawn. And I thought that I was doing fine here. And I was actually thinking, okay, if they really wanted to win this, then they need to get behind their A pawn. But then I was like, okay, but I could do I could do rook to h5. The computer is saying rook to a5. And then you could have got behind the pawn, and then I could have done rook to a3. And I was still winning here, but I don't know. I'm not going to lie, I don't know this sequence of how to win, but I knew the one that you did of how to win. I knew the one um, of how to win of the position of the position that you did, because you want the rook on a6 behind this pawn instead of in front of it. So even so, I would have, I mean, yeah, rook b8, well, rook b1 was probably your best chance. I'm not going to lie. And then, yeah, we just got into this rook endgame pretty hard. Um, mostly about psychology because you kind of forced it. And, um, yeah. This was just losing. Lost a pawn. And that's generally how, that's generally how the analysis went. <clears throat> Did anybody got any questions about this game? Lessons that you learned. And then we just... Simplified the position where we um, eventually got a queen king uh, checkmate sequence. I'm 1900 in Lee Chess. What would my over the board be? Sadly, on Lee Chess, I think it's more inflated than chess.com. So I would definitely like, and I'm not, I am a chess.com streamer, but this is one of the reasons why I, I switched to chess.com. Because leechess.org is is like hyperinflated. I was um I'm still am like 2292 in rapid and leechess.org. And then I went to chess.com and played rapid and I was lucid to 1900s in rapid, 2000 rated uh, 2000 rated people in rapid. And I was wondering like why am I getting whooped by all these lower lower rated people? Because on leechess.org, they make you believe that you're actually actually like doing your stuff, like you're a 2300. But I found out 
two things. First of all, leechess.org is hyper inflated, and I think it might be like 400 ELO hyper inflated than over the board. Because I think it's like 200 um, ELO difference for, uh, from chess.com. Second thing is, I think leechess.org um, culture is more positional chess playing skills rather than tactical. Because that was the other thing that happened when I switched to chess.com, there would be like 1500s and like 1700s beating me in tactics when I'm like a 2000 rated person. And so those were the big two things that kind of made me lean more towards chess.com than leechess.org. <laughs> Ronaldo or Messi? I'm not, I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> That's all on y'all. Leechess is only inflated at the start. Well, I don't, I don't know. Because I think I played in a tournament recently on leechess.org and 2300s felt like 2000 on chess.com. I'm not going to lie. That's just how I felt. It might be different. I don't know. Everybody has a different experience. But I did hear from some other people that said when you get around like 2400, maybe upper 2300s, then it kind of starts balancing out. It kind of starts balancing it out. Yeah, because you started at 1,200. No, I'm 2,200 on leechess.org. My leechess.org account is H1 chess. Both are insanely overrated. Yeah, but over the board, over the, over the board beats all. So your over the board rating, if your um, rating on leechess.org is 1,900, would be like 1,600 pretty much. Depending on... Depending on even if you like classical games. Depending on even if you like classical games like that. Because there are some people that do better in longer time control. And then there's some people that do better in shorter time control. Just look at people like Andrew Tang. Uh, I mean, he does really well in Bullet. But in classical, uh, I mean, he's still strong. He could, he could beat me any day of the week. But he's not like beating Magnus Carlsen, MVL, Fabiano Caruana, etc. But I used to watch him all the time. I actually still do. I'd be watching this. I'd be watching people's past streams, actually. I'd be watching people past streams. And being like, how do you move so fast? It's most prevalent at lower levels, apparently. Okay, okay. Andrew Tang trains in uh, Aim Lab. Oh, okay, okay. So you are only taking w's a stream yeah pretty much we're ending it off there what's your fee day i don't have a fee day but my uscf is 1800 right now but i haven't played in a tournament in like five years i only played online the computer hated my position but i never listened to it if i had been able to play it out with the, uh without them disconnecting had a had a lot of tactics yeah yeah potentially my bad epic for missing your comments man same uh, yeah dania too which sucks but just like who Caro said, 3-0, Dania's basically a super GM at 3-0. Dania's basically a super GM. All right, let me change the music right quick. Y'all know how we're going to do it. We're going to get hype. We are going to be rating somebody on Twitch. So, I mean, say some names of who y'all want to rate. You know what? Let's just end it off with some 80 vibes. Let's end it off with some 80s vibes. All right, cool. This was a really good stream. And I'm glad that y'all can be here. Wait a minute, wrong song. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. There we go. Who underscore is underscore Hokage just Thank you for being here. Um, keep on fighting to the end, staying focused in chess and in real life too. Who is Hokage? Thank you for following. Make sure that you follow this channel. I will be streaming tomorrow with Lamina. We'll be doing a tournament for everybody. It's going to be really cool. Make sure that you are here. Had to drop the follow on Twitch too. Definitely about to uh, see more. Exactly. And I got a lot more collaborations on the way. Trust me. We're not going to just stop at GM Canty. We're going to go bigger. Which GM Kenty is pretty big, honestly. Like, dude's a, a a super good guy too. I talk to him after the stream all the time. Huge guy. Huge guy. But anyway, 
I will see y'all later. Let let me uh, raise somebody right quick on Twitch. And on TikTok, thank you for being here. Play some Kanye. I can't. I'm on YouTube, guys. I'm on YouTube. <laughs> I can't play any Kanye. We got 300 people. Dang. Oh, the <laughs> If y'all want to, if y'all want to see a fun stream, I, I want y'all to see Arms TV stream. <laughs> okay, so hey, go to Arms TV stream and just shout out H1 really loudly. Like, just type in H1. Hey, H1 raid. Be excited. Uh, make sure to show him the same support that you showed me. I appreciate every single one of you. Peace on Twitch. Don twenty two eighty six just followed. Hey, there we go. Peace out.